Today in the news, we got some impressive Zen 3 benchmarks and NVIDIA response to the capacitor debacle. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So we know that the next generation of AMD CPUs will feature Zen 3 cores. And so far, the most information we got was on paper. AMD says that their goal is to maintain the progress above a 7% increase in IPC every 12 months. Thankfully though, they kept that bar much higher since the introduction of Zen. And it looks like the trend is not stopping with Zen 3. In terms of the lineup, only two CPUs have been uh, rumored so far. There's a 5900X, which is supposedly a 12 core CPU with an early sample clocking in at 3.7 gigahertz base and a insanely fast 4.9 gigahertz boost. Actually, in recent rumors, they say that it could reach up to five gigahertz, but I'll just put a pin in that for now as there are no OPNs, no leaks, and no reputable leakers with a good track record that really shows that specific number. Then there's also the 5800X, which should be an eight core CPU. For this specific model though, we got some numbers. Tom Apisak, a reputable benchmark crawler, found the 5800X benchmarked in Ashes of the Singularity. After looking into it, it looks like a single user named DPU Tiger has been benchmarking the 5800X quite a bit at multiple resolutions. Solutions. We have the crazy 1080p all the way up to the crazy 4k preset. So let's look at the scores. At all the crazy presets, it seems like the 10900K still beats the 5800X in overall score. Not only that, but the 10900K also has a higher average frame rate than AMD's next gen 8 core processor. So why is everyone saying that AMD's 5800X is beating the 10900K? Well, it's because of the CPU frame rate category. The 5800X is about 10 to 20% faster than Intel's 10900K. That's AMD taking the lead at eight cores when compared to a 10 core from the competition. That's insane. By the way, if you try to look for the benchmarks, the user has unfortunately removed any trace of them in the database. I was lucky enough to still have the pages open to take some screen grabs. Anyways, the fact that the 10900K is still able to get the top spot when it comes to total score and average frame rate means that frequency might still be in Intel's advantage for gaming. Sure, the AMD CPU has two less cores, but when I looked around for an average 9900K score with a RTX 2080, so that's eight cores versus eight cores, the 9900K still had a higher overall score. Don't get me wrong, the 5800X is still mighty impressive. It will probably wipe the floor with Intel and Zen 2 in IPC, but unfortunately, games are still pretty much frequency dependent. Next up in the news, we got Nvidia. You probably heard about the capacitor fiasco, but just as a refresher, it looks like RTX 3000 cards are crashing and the problem is linked to the capacitor types used behind the GPU chip for power filtering. The more groups of MLC caps, the better. And uh, here is a meme that explains it super easily. Now, Nvidia made a statement about it, but it's pretty much nothing. They said that the appropriate number of POS cap versus MLCC groupings can vary depending on the design Design and is not necessarily indicative of quality. That's it, they're basically saying that they're not sure. And first, I wanna give my opinion on it. It's technically a driver slash VBIOS issue first. Yeah, sure, the cards with less or no MLCC groups might crash at higher clock speeds, but the advertised clocks are still met. It's only when the driver tells the GPU that it's all good to go a little bit higher and then the cards crash. Nvidia is already sending fixed drivers, AKA lower boosting ones to AIBs for testing and it seems like it works so far. But going back to the MLCC versus podcaps debacle, yes, it definitely makes a difference for how high the automatic boost and overclocks can go. Roman over at Derbauer proved it by uh, taking a card with six pos caps, removing two, testing the GPU boost with only four pos caps, and then soldering 10 MLCCs in their spot for an increase in boost clock compared to the stock capacitor setup. So yes, it makes a difference, but only if you plan on overclocking and the difference is also very small. And while that's happening, manufacturer MSI is prepping some new-ish cards without any announcement. The company has quietly introduced V2 versions of two of their GPUs, the MSI GeForce RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio V2 and the Ventus 3X V2. What's the difference? Well, the capacitors, of course. If you bought one of those two, give MSI a call to see what they can do for you. And let me know on Twitter. I'd love to know 
what their response is and what kind of customer service they offer. If they don't offer you a kind of fix, I think it's kind of sneaky on their part. And that's pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, yesterday was my birthday. Thank you for uh, everyone who gave uh, me the birthday wishes. Goodbye. Rolling them dice, I love it, I love it, I'm fine. Canvas for faces, I'm painting these pictures of mine.